Hello, Oscillator Sync here. This here is the ADAC 604 dual filter. It is a Eurorack dual mono or stereo multi-mode filter. And I recently bought one and popped it in my rack. And I did so basically sight unseen because uh, I couldn't find any demos of this filter out there. I basically just took a punt on it because it was the form factor I was looking for. Um, but now that it's in my rack, I thought what I would do is create the video that I couldn't find so that if anyone else is interested in this module, uh, they've got this video to refer to to check out ahead of the purchase. So um, let's take a look, shall we? So the module is basically made up of two identical single modules, uh, but they can be routed together in different ways. Um, in terms of um, inputs, we've got um, the input for the signal that you're filtering. Uh, and then we have an input here for CV control over the cutoff uh, and an attenuverter here um, for that signal. Outputs wise, we have an output for high pass, band pass and low pass. And of course you can be using them uh, all at the same time. Up here on the controls, we have cutoff and resonance. Uh, so we have CV control over cutoff. We don't have CV control uh, over resonance. Um, so just to bear that in mind, uh, if you don't um, patch anything into uh, the inputs of um, the, the second half of the module, then uh, they are normaled across from uh, the first there. So up at the top here, we have a switch which um, controls how everything is routed internally. With the switch to the left, it's operating in dual mono mode, so you have two completely independent um, channels. To the right, it's in stereo mode. Now, what that actually means uh, depends on whether or not you have a jumper installed uh, on two pins on the back. Now, out of the box, it's uh, uninstalled. Uh, so the jumper isn't in there. And uh, in that case, when you switch to stereo mode, essentially the cutoff and cutoff attenuverter controls um, here are, are disabled. And um, everything is controlled from the left-hand side. So I sweep the cutoff on the left-hand side to control the cutoff on the right-hand side as well. If you install the jumper, which I have, uh, you can offset the um, the cutoff on the right hand side, so you can have the right hand side slightly more open, slightly more closed, uh, etc. In the middle, it's more or less even. Might have to tune it by ear a little bit, but yeah, more or less uh, even. So it allows you to have uh, an uneven um, filter cutoff in the stereo field, which I personally prefer so that's what i have here and that's what we'll be listening to um, when we get into the stereo demos it is also important to note that the resonance controls are completely independent so um, even when you're in stereo mode and they're completely linked without the jumper installed you still have to set the resonance the same on both sides if you want the resonance to be the same on both sides there's no internal routing with the resonance there's no cv over it um, either so just something to be aware of. Okay, let's have a listen. So I've just got um, this coming out of Platts. So we're just in um, mono at the moment. Uh, we're in the low pass here. So uh, no resonance, sweeping that cutoff down. bring the resonance up to maybe a third. About two thirds. Picking out the harmonics nicely there. And on full. So fairly smooth sounding. The resonance isn't overbearing. It doesn't sound like a super steep um, curve either. We don't totally go to silence at the at the uh, bottom there. So let's move over to the high pass and take a listen. Uh, so resonance down. About a 
add a third. About two thirds. Again, picking out those harmonics nicely. And crank it all the way. And on to band pass. A third on the resonance. Two thirds ish. That lower harmonic getting whooped out at the bottom there. And on full, crikey, it gets a little bit out of control. Just try and balance that level a little bit. So the band pass. Resonance is a lot more aggressive. Now I've actually got my um, oscillator running through um, a VCA. The output of Platts is quite hot. Uh, so I'm just dropping the level a little bit. Uh, and that's because this filter will overdrive in and saturate in quite a, a, an interesting way. Um, so let's just have a listen to that uh, on band pass. And I'll just try and bring up the level of the oscillator and just balance the level So it's just with half resonance. You can hear there's quite a bit more saturation and burn there. And if we bring up the resonance, I'll just drop the volume a little bit. resonance starts to get quite unstable. And it almost starts to ping itself. Almost stepping into those harmonics. Let's just um, hear that with the low pass, perhaps. You can hear there that sort of picking out and stepping to the harmonics, which is really interesting. So that resonance becomes almost steppy, but it's not digital stepping or anything. If we bounce everything back level-wise there. If we're not burning into it so much, it's a lot smoother. So that's pretty interesting.
Okay, let's just quickly hear um, something um, going from mono to stereo. So I'm just sticking with the Platts um, oscillator here, and this is in mono as we were before. But I've also plugged in the um, low pass filter on the second side, and I've got it set to low pass. And if I plug it in, you might have slightly detected that there was something stereo going on, but it's not particularly obvious. But because I have the jumper on, what I can do is offset one side here, and now as I sweep the left side, if you're listening in headphones, you'll probably detect that there is something sort of subtle widening going on. If we bring up some resonance, We have got something quite wide from what was a mono signal. We'll listen to this with a proper stereo signal as well, but I just wanted to demonstrate that even with a mono signal, go back to just the one side, that's mono. stereo now. Yeah, even with a mono signal we can get some width to our sound. So before I get on to some stereo sources, I just wanted to do like some sort of generic acid kind of sequence just to have a listen to that. But we're doing it in stereo, uh, or rather we've got a mono signal coming in. Uh, I'm just um, triggering a sequence of PAMs and Stages is doing just a little AD envelope, or just decay envelope actually, which is going into the CV input of the dual filter here. If we try and balance the cutoff on the second side here, then it pretty much sounds like it's in mono, but if we offset it, we get quite a cool stereo image in there as well. We can make one side more resonant if we want to change the we can try burning into the filter a bit more yeah more and some of that saturation going. We can also have one side go down, one side go up with the offset there. So we can have one side brighter but not as enveloped. Lots of things we can do. Okay, so let's have a listen to uh, an actual stereo sound source. So I've just got this piano loop here, lots of reverb and delay and stuff going on. And we'll just start with the, um, with the low pass. And I've tried to get them matched pretty much um, spot on left and right. Uh, remember, we need to actually set the resonance on both sides. My bad. Here we're burning a little bit, bit of saturation. If 
but that sort of slightly unstable resonance when we drive it a bit harder so it will overdrive Sounds kind of cool on those reverb trails. Let's try the um, high pass. really driving hard into the fill third so it's saturating and always offset those sides as well to accentuate the stereo image again we can tame that crunch just by not driving it quite as hard Okay, let's try band pass. I really like how the resonance sounds on reverb trails. Let's give it a bit more signal. Something sweet about that sort of unstable resonance on the reverb. Drive a bit harder. Of course, we don't have to have the resonance turned up like that. And we could start massaging that cut off with some CV. Thank you. 
All right, so with the basic sound demos out of the way, let's um, answer some of the other sort of filtery questions that you might ask. So the first one uh, that I was wondering about is, would it track volts per octave? Because we don't actually have a, a straight CV input for the cutoff, we have uh, it via a, a tenuverter. So um, what I've got here is PAMS is firing out CV that should be quantized to a major chord, and I'm just exciting it with a little bit of noise. And with some careful um, tuning with the attenuverter, you can hear that the extreme highs and extreme lows, it's out of tune. But in the middle, there's a couple of octaves that track OK. That top note, those last two bottom notes are probably out of tune, but in the middle we've got a couple of octaves of a major chord there, so it, 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 with a bit of tuning you can get some volts per octave if you're selective about your range, which is nice to know. So next question, uh, can you ping it? And the answer is, it almost sounds like it's designed for it. So um, I've just got PAMS sending two different trigger patterns into the inputs and I've just got the resonance turned up. We've got a lovely little woody plucks there. So yeah, pushing the resonance, you get kind of like a more of a plonk sound, depending on where your cutoff is. Gets nice and deep. and cutting and woody there. So yes, absolutely. Very much the case that you can ping this filter. It sounds best on band pass, on low pass and high pass. The resonance isn't quite as interesting. It's still there. Kind of clicky and not quite as interesting. The band pass is certainly um, where it is at for me, anyway. Okay, so in this patch, I've got a low tuned um, sawtooth wave coming in to the filter. And I'm coming out of the, um, the bandpass filter on both sides, but I'm just mixing them together rather than listening to them in stereo. And I'm just slowly uh, with a um, smooth random, um, smooth random wave, or two smooth random waves rather from PAMS. Just moving both of them around. And by stacking together those two resonant band passes, we get that cool vocal glottal formant sounds going on. Because of course we don't need to use it in stereo, we can use it some to mono. So on the ones that's one of the filters. That's the other one, and then when we stack them together, we get those cool formats. And a 
depending whether you have it on stereo or dual mono, um, they will move together or not. So now they're moving completely independently. Whereas on stereo, they move together, which I think tends to sound a bit more vocal. So another cool thing that you can do with a uh, proper multi-mode filter rather than one that uh, switches between modes is you can take a signal in and if you take your um, low pass and your high pass out from a single channel into your left and right, what you end up with is a kind of spectral panner. So as we move the cutoff, we're panning. as we're opening up one filter and closing the other. But it's kind of a different kind of panning. There's some of that overdrive in the resonance again. Punching things up nicely. So the slope on the filter isn't that sharp. It's, you know, when we close it all the way down, the signal's still definitely there. It's a fairly gentle uh, filter slope. But of course, if we do want to have something that's a little bit more um, intense and, and uh, steep, we can actually cascade the two sides. And this is especially useful if we're in stereo mode, where we can still control it from one side. So at the moment, we're going into the left-hand side and then out of the left-hand side, as you normally would. Uh, but instead, if we go into the right-hand side and then take the low-pass output and put it into the input, of uh, the left. So we're going into the right, out of the right, into the left, and then back out of the left. And now we have a much steeper filter sweep, and we can balance the resonance of the two filters as well to get more squelch if we want. Still isn't the, the steepest curve. Without notching the other one down, we still don't go all the way to zero. We can certainly get steeper, dare I say more synthetic tones. by stacking the two sides this way. Okay, so just to finish off with a slightly more needlessly complicated patch, um, what have we got going on here? Well, uh, just a basic oscillator coming out of disting into the input of the first side of the filter, which is in dual mono mode, so the two independent sides, coming out of the band pass of the first side into the input of the second side. Uh, second side, uh, Low pass is going out to a VCA and the VCA out to the output. Both the um, VCA and the um, cutoff on the second side have been enveloped using stages, triggered with PAMs. Um, you know, so far, so boring. What's quite fun, however, is that I've got another oscillator on plats here, and if we go into the um, CV input of the first side and start bringing this on that and we get some really gnarly faux FM sound, well, actual FM sounds actually, but sound very um, convincing, especially that sort of raspiness that we get with the um, resonance there. Let's 
until that damn time it. we had there. the resonance was CV about though again that the way that the resonance saturates leads to some very interesting sounds so although I don't want to do like a, a review I wanted to just do a demo I'll just share my thoughts if I may just at the end of the video um, so this isn't really the filter that I thought I was getting as I say I, I bought it um, sight and scene I sort of had it in my mind that it was going to be a little bit more conventional um, but actually because of what I primarily want it for which is um, processing um, samples and, and loops that unstable um, resonance in the way that it saturates actually does present some really really interesting um, options and textures that maybe wouldn't have been there if this was like a semi or a moogie style filter um if you're looking for something that is sort of generally synthetic um, for standard synth sounds maybe this isn't the one you would necessarily go for but if you want to process sounds uh, and also the way that you can kind of up mix sounds from mono to stereo with the offsetting especially once you've installed the jumper i think it's really really interesting it's also tiny it's only 6 hp um, and it's fairly inexpensive as well so um as i say not necessarily what I thought I was buying, but I'm glad that I took a punt on it and ended up with it nevertheless. So anyway, I hope that was useful and or interesting. Um, if you enjoy the video, please do give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the channel, uh, all that um, good stuff. Um, as I say, I don't usually do straight up demos, but I did just want to make sure that um, there was a video out there for this filter because I struggled to find any demo, so I wanted to make sure that uh, other people weren't put in that situation as well. As always, thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.